Hello again, this is Ryan from Better Tattooing. Um, in the shop today, pulling apart some machines. And uh, I've got a few on the table here, but I think what we're gonna be starting with is probably this one. I think it's a Dragon Hawk. So let's see what's up with this old machine and how it works. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Not that's over with. Breakdown and taking apart of one of these. Um, to start, might as well find our markers here and do a little bit of weight testing on top of this. Pretty easy disassembly. It's kind of an older machine, I think. Um, same type of slide apparatus that we had in the uh, previous video. You can see we got a slide pin on there. This one's loaded though and it's under tension. There's a spring that's attaching into it. It's a little bit different than the, the other one that we had, which is probably going to make it run a little bit more snug and quicker, having a little bit less float at the higher uh, voltages when you're running these rotaries, which is nice. Um, basic assembly, I mean, we can go ahead and take a pe peek at the weights here. I'll make sure I write this down in the descriptions so that we all know. Uh, we'll do our grams, of course, because doing ounces just it does I don't like ounces too much it's the base 10 is the way to go so anyway 61.169 ish uh, grams for the battery and we get to the machine here uh, about 133.42 4 grams for the machine. Uh, in relation to the last video that we had, this one is quite a bit lighter. Um, general vibe and feel, it's just a smaller machine in general. I mean, the, the weight and bulk on this is, is much, much less. It does feel a little bit kind of fragile like the the last one, um, which I, I don't know, I'll put it in like a little, whatever, like one of those banner thingies, some floating words that say what the, I don't even remember what the last brand name was, but what can you do? Um, so yeah, this one is not not too big of a deal so far. I mean, disassembly seems to be relatively simple. Um, there is quite a bit of white lithium grease stuck on the inside there for the slide, which is nice to see. Inside the actual capture front there, relatively good machining. Backside of the motor, a pretty flimsy just plastic pivot plate here. Operation's a little rough on it as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the flywheel off. For disassembly, it's a simple, single uh, Allen hex head that's in the back side of there. And it says, do not remove. Okay, well, no, we're not doing that. Take this off. Let's see where we're at here. All right, back at it. A uh, twist plate here, the same one as before. Seems to be a pretty efficient way of creating these back ends to hold everything together. A pair of needle nose, it's got two slotted or two holes here. We can go ahead and punch our stuff through, which will reveal our motor. Maybe. <laughs> I don't want to twist this one a bit too much here, but. There we go. This, we can grab our lot number on the motor, and we can go ahead and actually check this out and look up the specs, which I'll post on the screen here. LRF-370 CHV-18215. Manufactured in 08-10-2020. We can go ahead and take a look at that and figure out what our um, actual uh, sets uh, of, uh, just for diagnostic purposes, what this thing is actually supposedly supposed to run at. Uh, the motor for this is actually quite large um, in comparison with some of the newer machines that we've seen. Our profile and size seems to be uh, a bit smaller. This is kind of like a motor that you may find in you know small RC cars, something like that. Um, they're relatively cheap, I know that, to manufacture, 
But uh, I, I can't, I'm not gonna fully remove this because this thing is soldered in the back and I don't wanna play around with that RCA connector because uh, usually when I do that, I can't get them to sit back together very well. But anyways, a uh, breakdown on this is really, really simple so far. I mean, this is probably the easiest rotary machine I've ever been able to pull apart, which makes me wonder maybe somebody else had done this before or not. Um, but we'll go ahead and get some stuff set up and put this through some tests um, to see how this motor operates with our flywheel on here. And then after that, we'll get to the battery. So be right back. All right, so before we get into testing the revs, let's go ahead and pull apart the battery. I wanted to do a dry test and see what's up with this. This machine is not brand new, of course. It's a few years old. It seems like it's not wanting to start up, so maybe an error with the battery. So... <clears throat> Let's go ahead and do this because it's always fun to sit here, take things apart and see if we can get them working, especially these old machines that cost, oh, I don't know, maybe $120 brand new. It's still a decent investment. I mean, I think the first tattoo machine I bought, I mean, it was a number of years ago, uh, was from Spalting at Rogers. You know, it came, what was it, like a quick change machine and I got a Puma and I think they were like $110 a piece. So, and I used that quick change, I mean, geez, for about five years before it, it actually shattered some of the old chrome models and the side plate just exploded um, because it, it vibrated so much. I mean, you'd run that thing relatively high voltage because I, I never knew actually how to tune it when I was younger. And uh, I just beat the Jesus out of it. And uh, eventually, yeah, the side plate just exploded off and I uh, was left with another machine after that. Anyways, uh, same type of battery setup, pretty simple. We've got uh, markings on the side of the battery that show estimated voltage from five, 6.5, 8.5, 8.0. So 1.5 volt inter increments in between those. Um, wiring and stuff on the back seems fine. There's no gla gasket around the outside edges of this. I'm actually seeing some type of material on, on the inside of this. It's probably left over from cleaning. Um, general I guess look at this is that it's just it looks like a battery shoved in a box um so we'll try to remove it here and take a peek at what this thing actually looks like. all right got it back open now that was quite the fight I actually had to drill and tap the bottom after heating this this epoxy up and end up pushing it from the back out which is fine because I can just use some resin and fill in the back side of this thing to make it good uh there's the battery out you can see all the glue that was on the sides of this stuff this actually looks like cobbler glue, which is kind of funny. Did end up crushing the battery just a little bit. It's not too big of a deal because these are, in and of themselves, extremely easy to find. Let's make sure we keep track of this one too. There's our pen app. Battery model is SC18500. It's a 1500 uh, milliamp hours at 3.7 volts. Which is kind of interesting, right? 5.5 uh, watt hours, which is cool. So I mean, full charge from empty, you know, usually these are going to take, you know, four to five hours and it should give you four to five hours worth of runtime on it. Um, at 3.7 volts, this is actually a pretty weak battery in comparison with some of the other machines that I pulled apart. But a good thing is that these batteries, I think you can get six of them for $12 um, on uh, Alibaba or on Amazon, these are really, really cheaper. You know, if you're ever even into um, a bind and you need to get one for like a really quick rebuild, which I mean, these are these are really simple, right? They just got two contact points, your pause neg, and the wires come in. You can you can easily enough um, unsolder these grounds or these lines off of the ground and power line, and then just like resolder them onto a new battery and, and literally reassemble this in just a few seconds which is really, really simple. Uh, PCB board, same thing as the last one. It's clean, tidy, looks kind of good. I don't see any weirdness on it or any type of um, awkward stuff. And usually these, these companies, when they make these, <coughs> excuse me, they always end up doing pretty good on the, the electronic side, with the small parts that are gonna be manufactured. It's just the final assembly is where things seem to uh, lag behind. Mm. I'll grab our multimeter now and give us a bit of a test and see what we're actually running uh, at the battery and through the board and at the connection to see if that space that we had, uh, that little gap of, of, of power that we had where it wasn't running the machine is maybe something faulty due to a connection that may be dirty um, or if the actual unit is going to be garbage. So, I'm going to swap over to volts here, 
set this, run it up. Let's get it started up. Hold down our power button until we get, seems like power running. Anyways, go ahead and test our points here. Let's see what we're rated at. Come on now. Unless I actually totally damaged this. Okay, 3.802 volts to 3.7. That's actually not too bad. Um, this has been used for a little while, and like I'd said in the previous video, we're gonna put a marker. Um, eight volts at battery. Sorry, I can't multitask. Um, like I said in the previous one, usually when these batteries are gonna be used and they're, they're broken in over time, um, the proper voltage is usually gonna be you know, experienced down the road. I mean, if this is three years old, and it's it's just settling there now. I mean that, that's actually kind of neat. So, anyways, we'll go ahead and fire this thingy up again here. Go we'll ahead and test at the board and see where we're coming in here. Solder lines, everything is good. Three point eight oh two, and then at our output, Let's see if there is some type of loss happening along the line. Boop. We have no output right now. Let's get it started. If we can, we'll test it on the machine anyways and see if it's going to work here. Okay, so this may actually have something to do with one of these buttons here. Perhaps. There we go. It scared the crap out of me. Um, <laughs> let me get this one going. There we go. All right. Voltage output on this. It just keeps canceling out, eh? That's right, eight and a half volts coming out. So, I mean, there is power going through this. We seem to have a short. You can see we're moving this back and forth. One of these main lines that are right here, either in the connector coming into the back, which would make a lot of sense, um, or somewhere along the board and it's probably going to be one of these two connections if it was bad is is grounding out causing this thing to go into overload because it's shorting out and then causing the circuit to stop so that's actually really cool we we'll know that at least the battery is working and my bet is somewhere in the top here that this thing is just all busted up but since we got it open we got it running right now we know we may have an issue here let's go ahead and run at eight and a half volts and see what our spin up is going to be like on this thing here eight and a half volts running at about 6160 rpms which is about on par with what we had before eight point let's go eight volts 6160 rpm and if we decide to adjust this we go well, this one this one looks like it's probably at about 10 volts, let's test it out. It sure did spike up fast, didn't it? Let's see where we're at now. Come on now, I don't want to move this too much because I don't want to lose that, but we're at 10.14 volts. <laughs> I knew it jumped up to about 10, we'll go 10.14 volts. We are sitting at, how many RPMs on this sucker? Okay, you can know a noticeable jump on this, right? We're about 7,300 RPM on that now. Okay. And if we can drop this back down. Holy Jesus. What voltage is this? That sounds awful. Probably is just because that pivot plate is actually a little bit loose on there too for that flywheel. Now we're at 11 and a half volts. 11.79, it's a little high, it's probably supposed to be 11 and a half, 11.79. Our speed on this sucker is now, I just gotta remember to turn it back, about 8,500 RPM. Wow, that's pretty good. I'm no, noticing that most of these, uh, these machines are, are set to run it, you know. Oh, that is totally loose, dude. I can actually stop it. Um, these machines are calibrated to be to be run at like a maximum of about 10,000 RPMs at uh, 10 to 15 usually, or 10 to 12, uh, at, uh, at uh, 10 to 15 volts. This thing is right on par with where it should be. Um, now can we cycle this one all the way down or not? 
Looks like I might have shut off again. Anyways, I'm going to reassemble this one here and we'll take a look at that front slide mechanism and see what's up with that. All right, final bit here on the tests. Let's go ahead and pull this front chuck off. I just grab a pair of channel locks to do this. You use a piece of paper towel, you can grab around in a, you know, a cloth, something like that. I won't mark it too, too much. All right, pulling the slide off. Go ahead and take a peek inside. Same standard thing we had before, right? This is not very... Fancy. I mean, this is a better quality than the, the previous machine tested. Uh, same thing. We have, you know, our slide spring and a little bit of grease. Fun thing is, is that normally when they do these applications, they'll put the grease in last. So there actually isn't a whole lot that's actually along the slide. You can see this one's basically bone dry. Only a little bit has been fed through from this. But the spring on this in the center there actually will increase the return rate of this, creating a little bit less fluff, right? And, and how these go together is... Uh, we're going to have on this pivot, right, wherever this one ends up setting inside of these, right, you're going to have a different height as it goes around, right? So when you do your slide selection, what you're doing is moving this a little bit further, right? As it comes around, it'll end up having to move in a, a greater amount of distance, right, from top to bottom, because it's going to be at a certain point in that, that <clears throat> sorry, in that space where, where this is, between the, the uppermost point and the lowermost, right? And it'll be, uh, when it's set between those at different heights, that ends up actually changing how far that this has to travel to make a depression, right? So you're going to have a longer stroke on your machine that is going to be just adjusted by this. It's, it's not actually that, that difficult to, to manufacture these, but it's a genius design, right? You just add a slight angle on these and the more steep that your angle is as well is gonna increase how, how far that, that throw is. But these are just really cheap to manufacture. I mean, when you actually pull them apart and look at these, these cams, um, it, it's kind of brilliant. I don't know who started this, but this is just like a slight angle that's put on top of these, right? And you can you can adjust these actually manually with your machine if you wanted to. I mean, if you got into the uh, shop, you know, you can pull this, this actual flywheel off of the bearing mount that's there. You just push it out. You can mount these into something small and you can, you can manually grind these down to uh, a steeper angle if you wanted to have something that's a little bit more punchy because it'll end up actually tipping this up a bit more. A bad thing when you do that is, especially with these cheaper machines, um, the motors that are inside these, they end up just burning out more, right? A little bit faster because you're putting more strain on them. That steeper angle is just going to increase the amount of torque that's required by the motor to make it turn, um, especially if it's at its like maximum or apex setting. So um, be careful if you decide to do that. Um, I don't recommend it personally, but it is there if you want to. So now that's, oh Jesus, does this thing go back together? Now this stuff is all... I guess I'm going to be reassembled. We'll go ahead and set it back up and give you a final thought on how this thing operates. All right, final breakdown on this. Uh, machine battery combo on this, it's, I know it's three years old, so you can't buy these anymore, but looking on eBay, I found them for 60 bucks. Um, original MSRP was around 220 depending on where you lived. And I mean, I think for the setup, that is just such a waste of money. <laughs> this battery is so janky, um, considering the fact that it's not that old. And uh, it literally is like, I had these batteries in a vape, the same one I actually checked inside and I had the same ones that were being used in a vape, which I thought was really, really funny. Uh, and it, you know, it, it's just, it's kind of ridiculous. The motor inside of here costs roughly, you know, $8. So all you're paying for is the tooling and manufacturing of the outside shell of this, which I mean, past the, you know, this is aluminum, we painted it or oxygen anodized or whatever to make it look like brass. But this is the only high quality part in here is what the slide is on, right? The rest of this is really, really cheap. I mean, I could put a light pair of pliers on this and end up bending the hell out of it. Or if I dropped it too hard on the ground, this thing would get bent and maybe even crack or shatter. So um, or initial thoughts, I mean, if you are in a bind and you need something that's really cheap, you have one of these laying around and you want to give them to an apprentice, I mean, it's fine. You know, it's not, it's not built for tough, tough use. Um, I imagine that heat output on this is going to be probably pretty, pretty heavy <laughs> on stuff. It seems to be running inconsistent due to the battery. Um, I personally don't like it. I don't like the feel of it. The battery hanging off of the back has a lot of pull. And I mean, if you're going to do this, you might as well just have 
a, you know, an RCA, uh, like a cord. It's not a clip, an RCA cord plugged into the back of this, which you can't because it's got this friggin' DC mount thing. So, I mean, if you have a Singer sewing machine, you could probably just plug it right into there <laughs> and use that. But uh, it just feels awkward, clumsy. Um, I'll try giving it a run at the shop and see how it actually feels when we're doing a tattoo. But I imagine it's going to feel like a rotary machine because these are not complex. It's not like a coil machine where you have all of these nuanced aspects of its assembly. This literally just makes something go up and down. So, I mean, for 60 bucks, uh, you probably get a year out of it. It's is great. I mean, if you think if you run a $60 machine for a year and it breaks and you're able to buy that same $60 machine, what, 12 times? It's still under a thousand dollars. It's twelve years worth of rotaries, which I have, you know, another machine here, which we're going to be taking apart in a second, the Valhalla or Axis or whatever the hell this thing is. Um, that costs like you know seven hundred to a thousand dollars, depending on the setup. I I don't know until we pull this apart what this thing is actually going to look like on the inside, and if it, I think it's going to last that long. But I mean, cost benefit wise i mean this is that seems like it's pretty good is it going to be as maybe consistent as this which feels extremely well made uh no but it'll get the job done because remember rotary is just it's like a sewing machine so we should be good anyways let us know if that was neat for you uh like subscribe do all that stuff by hat and i'm gonna start pulling apart these other machines and making some videos so we'll talk to you soon this is ryan from better tattooing going for a drink of water and some